Hello, Ani. Hello. Um, thank you for joining us today for our six feature focus, a live Q&A for the documentary feature film, Happiness Scares Me No More, directed by Nevi Peterson, which will be available on demand until Sunday, midnight at Sunday, uh, October 25th. We will be taking some questions from the viewers as well, so be sure to ask the questions in the chat. Uh, thank you to our presenting partner, Crave. My name is Darlene Duponce. I'm from a Tikmik Shing Anishinaabe, and I am one of your guest programmers from the for the IN Festival 2020 Programming Committee. Uh, joining us today is director Nevi Peterson and editor Viva Van Der Liet. Welcome. Um, if you can just, just uh, say hello to us and introduce yourselves and where you're where you're at today. My name is Nivi Pilsen, and I'm the director and producer of Bishangnok Oxingen Nakpara. I'm sitting in Nuuk, Greenland, right now. My name is Viva van der Fleet, and I am the editor of Happiness Scares Me No More because I can't speak Greenlandic. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm sitting in Copenhagen. Yes, please um, share. Um, uh, the title of it, and maybe let's let's start there. Like you know what I mean. If you can say it in your language and um, the title of the film mm -hmm. and um, how the story came to you. Well, first the title "Bishong Nuk Elsingyum Nakpara," literally translated into "Happiness Scares Me No More," came in one of the interviews we did with Kukinoka while he was in Umanak, where we talked about this concept of happiness because he felt like he spent a lot of his life being scared or not mm, yeah being scared and in this interview he said and that just felt like the the essence of of this whole film and was a perfect title we thought um this documentary we started it two years ago i was contacted by uh, the agency of social affairs in greenland who um was making this um campaign uh, about sexual abuse of children and they wanted a documentary because that way they felt that they could reach a wider audience um, and the whole th purpose was to create some hope so that was in the film from the very beginning talked a lot with Gukinoga about this sense of of hope of light um, and also with Cornelia the other character that um, there needs to be some sense of hope uh, when you deal with such a heavy uh, emotional topic. And um, that was important for everyone who was aboard this project. Yeah. It's a really beautiful, powerful film and there is a lot of light and hope. Um, and I really, um, the, the, there is so much strength within their, um, within them wanting to come back and into community and sharing their stories. Mm -hmm. And um, for you as a filmmaker um, and telling those stories, what was, do you want to share some of the process around working with um, both uh, Guki and Cornelia? And, yeah. um, and, and just like, were there certain protocols or certain things that, or did you, you know, how did you just allow them that space, this wonderful, mm -hmm. amazing space that they were telling to be able to tell their story? I think there were definitely some things from the very beginning that I was very aware of, like what do we need to tell and what don't we need to tell, what is necessary, what is not necessary. And we talked a lot about that. Um, what's the purpose of telling certain details, for example, and um, what was also very important was that they kind of... Um, they didn't choose to have these experience, obviously. So having a sense of um, uh, control in what is being put out there, what is being told uh, and how their stories are being told, I think was also very, very much a part of the whole process. Um, yeah, I just lost it. Can you ask again? <laughs> how I'm a bit nervous. No, that's yeah. no, that's good. Um, so uh, when the the process of, of of making this film and sharing their story, and um, so 
thing you want to talk about like maybe about like how when like how it came to you and then but also the multi platforms that you were now working on within this storytelling and within all of the footage that you gathered. Um, how is it how is the um, stories can how do they continue to live. Well, yeah, first, this, the story how um, with Gukunuga, for example, we talked a lot about him not having been back to Umanna, and he's a part of uh, this bigger campaign, Gisli's uh, role model um, corps. What do you call that? Um, people that travel around Greenland and talk about their experiences and have these community events. Um, and in that, it was possible for us to bring him back to Umannak from Copenhagen where he lives today. So that was a, a very, I mean, big experience for me and, and Jan who was doing the cinematography to be a part of that whole journey he was on with his sister. Um, and uh, in terms of Cornelia, what was um, very, what, what took up a lot of um, our talking was where she was today because they, were in two different um, processes, if that makes sense. Yeah. And um, it, it, you, you need to tell which, where they are in their own process in the two different ways that they're in. It, um, and with her, we talked a lot about, you know, this, this um, treatment or self-love and, and um, being able to to stay in the emotion when it gets sad, when it gets, you know, um, and not escaping, trying to, how to cope with it when it gets really dark, you know, because that's, I think a lot of the time where you you don't know where to go is when when it just when it's just darkness, you know. So we we dealt a lot with that me and her uh, when we were preparing what to shoot, what to talk about. Um, and then it was such a happy coincidence that he, Kukinuga, was coming to the town where Cornelia was to have one of these talks in that Gishirisa realm. Um, and it happened to be at the same time when we were there filming. So we had this very, um, fortunate situation of them two being together and talking about how he dealt with it or how she dealt with it. And it became such a, such a good meeting point, you know, they had never met before that. And it just shows this need in having people you can mirror yourself in that anyone who's watching this hopefully feels as well. Mm -hmm. No, there was so much beauty um, within just the time you get to spend with them and how you and your team um, were not, um, there was a, you know what I mean? It, it felt like you were just naturally following them. They mm -hmm. feel like at, at one, any time that it was like, now you tell me about this horrible thing mm -hmm. or anything like that. But it, like, it was just like, yeah, there was space that allowed them to speak and, and mm -hmm. to and to process that and um maybe you if you can if you want to share a little bit about the editing and um moving towards that narrative of, of allowing them to even to to find how that story evolves and um becomes more of a narrative mm -hmm. well with with Gukinuka, we had this uh very um structured you know home out and home again you know where um, where we could, in a sense, weave in all the psychologists as well, and also Cornelia's story. They were they were weaved in together, you know. Um, and one of the bigger challenges we faced when editing was that um, there's there's the timeline of first we filmed in Umanna with Gukinuka, and then we went to South Greenland with Cornelia. But this, um, the, the climax of the film, you know, where he, uh, is it a plot, what do you call it, spoiler, if I mention that? <laughs> well, um, no, if you, want. you could do it, 
you could you could tell it you could tell it without telling the plot yeah so we, we needed to move uh something that happened in umanna which was the film's climax but it needed to follow the structure of a of a of the plot you know Vibe, i don't know if you want to talk more about that light just turned off yeah well we we were the whole the whole it's a very it's a very planned and very structured uh setup and that's of course because of the 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 intimacy intimacy of the the the, the things that were talked about uh every spot in the film is very well planned and prepared and and thought of this is where they talk about this part this is what we talk about that part and that way the whole film is structured chronologically following Guki's uh, path and then interweaved with, with the, the psychologist and Cornelia's path but then the thing that wasn't planned was that Guki suddenly had to go to southern Greenland and meeting uh, uh, Cornelia so this didn't fit in our uh, it, th those two narratives suddenly uh, had an extra add-on and that that made that the the height the the climax of the film was two places and it was very difficult of of getting that and we've been we were literally <laughs> two days before we okay. had to be finished uh, one day or I don't know because it, it it's it became a blur because we had the sort of like a marathon for 36 hours of cutting and sleeping on the sofa and, and on the floor <laughs> and on, the, on the floor in this cutting room here so we uh, we 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 found the solution which is the film as it is right now where we yeah without spoiling it it's you have to see it um to 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 understand but we found a solution in the very, very, very last minute, I would say, to, 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 and we, yeah. Where the creativity yeah. gets to just be wild and follow its own path whenever it comes, if it's in the very last minute or, you know, but it was, uh, yeah. yeah. Nice. But also did his, their own stories and their own, their own kind of growth also seems like it changed the narrative. As yeah, definitely. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think something definitely happened with both Kukinoka, of course, with being, you know, in Uma not being back, and also with Cornelia, because it was so, so intense when we filmed both in Uma Nak and in Kakoktok that, you know, even from day one to day three or four, we were filming, you know, you could just feel this. Um, they took so many steps in such a short time. It was uh, it was such a privilege to to witness. Yeah, uh, respect. We have yeah. a question. Um, Nevi, you treat the subject and the people in the film with such care. How do you care for yourself while making such difficult film? That's a great question. So a part of the what do you call it? Deal with the agency of social affairs was that. Before we started this whole project, I, I told them that it would be completely necessary for everyone working on this film to have psychologists or at least some professionals available. Not with us the whole time, but you know, it was important for me to offer it to Jan, who is the cinematographer, to Vibe, you know, and also Kukinuka and Cornelia, of course, that if there was anything um, that they, they or I needed to talk about, it was important to to deal with it as it came. Um, so I had a I had a psychologist available for me for su supervision, or if there was anything I just needed to um, address or get out or uh, feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a yeah, that's a good question because it is important for for everyone uh, in such a project to to be aware of what am I feeling right now how is it affecting me and the work and um yeah 
Yeah, no, it, it, it's within your, yeah, and within those responsibilities of yourself and, and, and the crew and protect, and yeah, making everybody safe, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it becomes, of, of you know, at the beginning of the, of the film, um, I think it's within that poem where they talk mm -hmm. about, you know, you know what I mean, not only like, you know what I mean, like, like that connection, but there's about safety. Exactly. And I think, yeah, and I think in our communities, we talk about that so much, and it's so important, mm -hmm. so... That's yeah, and it, and it was great having the social social affairs um, in in my back, if that makes sense. Because when we were uh, traveling Greenland, showing this film in in different towns, they were coordinating uh, in, with the local the landscape uh, responders, social yeah. responders, so that the people watching this film afterwards, if they had reactions of any sort, then there would be people to, uh, you know, catch them. Um, and that was uh, also very important for them and for me to to have. And it was uh, that way very well organized every time we we screened the film in, in a town. Yeah, no, that's really, that's beautiful. There's another question here. What made you want to include the psychologist to supplement Googie's and Cornelia's story? Mm. That was one of the things from the very beginning with the um, social affairs in Greenland was that we, we were talking about wanting to to reach people to have them mirror their own experiences or not necessarily their own, but maybe if it was a family member or something, but that we also wanted knowledge to reach people, if that makes sense. So some knowledge about what is the long-term effects, for example. Um, I think for a lot of people, they might experience very strong emotions of, of sort, not knowing exactly where it's coming from. And so hearing, for example, one of the psychologists talking about what kind of um, long-term effects it might be, then you know, realizing, okay, maybe that's what I'm experiencing. Um, and with the psychologist, we talked about different things, long-term effects, um, forgiveness, which is a very big issue as well, because we live in small communities and some people do feel that it is necessary to move on to quickly forgive. And that was very important to address that um, it might be too soon, as, as one of the psychologists says. So we wanted to to weave these these interviews in to give the the viewer uh not only you know the chance to mirror them their own experiences in Kukinuka and Cornelia but also to hopefully gain some more knowledge about the some different issues around sexual abuse in childhood but we had so much interview with the psychologists um that in the process, uh, me and Vibe, we um, we thought we can't possibly fit all of this amazing material into you know this documentary. So um, we decided or asked asked the social affairs if we could make a podcast series with all this uh, great material we had with the psychologists. Unfortunately, they were in, and um, we're right now in the very end of the uh, making of this podcast series of. 10 episodes uh, in Greenlandic and Danish, both. Wow. And so that will come out when you, and, and you're, you're um, broadcasting it also in Greenland and Denmark and the Faroe Islands? Yeah, it's, uh, it's this, um, what do you call it, like a, a universe on the new website of, it's called Parasa, a section of the social affairs and the government of Greenland. Um, and it's called Kisirisa Podcast, if, if anyone wants to... Um, to look it up. Um, hopefully it'll come during this fall no, or it will but... come during this fall. Well, that's our time. Is there anything you wanted to quickly oh, share? Right. I know. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything um, you wanted to just quickly share? Well, I'm extremely happy that um, for the, for the, what do you call it, the whole process we've been in uh, both with Bibe, with Kukinuka and Cornelia, and it's uh, it's been quite an expedition since I started this whole subject. And um, yeah, 
thank you to everyone who was involved in one way or another. Well, thank you for sharing this really powerful and beautiful film. Um, and I hope the audience and um, the communities get to see more of this. And it, and it really, it's 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 also, I think, um, I, I really like the platforms and what you're doing and, and how you can reach a larger audience mm -hmm. and bringing it back into the communities. And so those stories become part of that healing. So yeah. talk. thank you very much for being thank with you. us today. And thank you very much for the opportunity. Yes. Um, and um, yes, thank you everybody um, for joining us today. Uh, join Adam Puron, who will be hosting the next short focus for the Shorts Black starting at 4 p.m. Eastern on this platform. I invite you all to come back and join me and the artists as we continue with some exciting programs. And be sure to check out the website each day for the festival schedule and all the good things that uh, that is planned. And on that note, um, thank you again for joining us and everybody and uh, stay safe and uh, enjoy the festival. <laughs>